welcome to all students uh, in our last lecture we discussed about uh, some protection schemes over voltage and over current protection schemes of uh, hvdc transmission systems <coughs> okay um, in this lecture uh, we will discuss the role of dc reactor so i am writing here dc reactor you already know where is this DC reactor used in an HVDC power transmission system. For example, if this is the simplified schematic diagram of your HVDC transmission system, this is the DC line reactor or DC reactor, which is also called smoothing reactor. What is the role of smoothing reactor? Now you may ask a question that we already know the role of smoothing reactor. We have already studied it. And you may say that the smoothing reactor uh, um, is used to smoothen the DC line or transmission line current. Uh, the answer is yes, you are right, but that is not the only role played by the smoothing reactor or uh, this DC reactor. It uh, plays another vital role in preventing the commutation failure. Okay, actually, what happens? Let us assume this is uh, this is the inverter, you know, uh, and uh, this is the rectifier end. And um, the inverters are susceptible to commutation failures, we already know. <laughs> inverters, there are frequent commutation failure incidents in inverter in an HVDC power transmission system. Now, the cause, various causes of the commutation failure I have already discussed with you are maybe some fault conditions. AC voltage, you know, AC vol uh, voltage on the AC side of the inverter may have fall, fallen due to some uh, fault on the AC side which results uh, what is this current in fact it is this voltage minus this voltage divided by this um, um, this impedance okay if this side inverter side voltage has fallen this ID which is equal to this voltage minus this voltage divided by this inductance the current increases and you already know the increase in current results in increase in U u means overlap angle and as u increases gamma decreases and gamma becomes less than gamma min and that results in commutation failure we have already studied it and, and we have drawn the waveforms for this type of situation also in one of the previous classes another cause of uh, commutation failure may be increase in the current i mean there may be increase in the current dc line current uh, because not because uh, there is there was a fault on AC side because of some other reasons so as soon as this DC line current increases this also increases U and uh, reduces gamma uh, making gamma less than gamma min and, and that uh, you know uh, causes commutation failure so how does DC reactor uh, help in preventing the commutation uh, failure what DC reactor does DC reactor LD reduces did by dt i mean it reduces the rate of rise of current that is rate of rise of current by did by dt is reduced and when it reduces the rate of rise of current it delays the occurrence of commutation failure and delaying the occurrence of commutation failure means um, before the commutation failure um, occurs, uh, the fault conditions may be over. Maybe the fault is very, very temporary. It is there for a few milliseconds or, you know, fraction of a second or a few seconds only. What this inductor will do as soon as this inverter side voltage collapses. Suppose there is collapse on inverter side voltage. So rectifier side voltage is okay. Inverter side voltage has collapsed. So what will happen to this current? The current is this rectifier side voltage minus inverter side voltage divided by impedance. Now since inverter side voltage has collapsed, so current will increase. But what will this DC reactor or smoothing reactor do? It will limit the rate of rise of current. And when it limits the rate of rise of current, DID by DT, when it limits it, uh, the U, no doubt U increases, but the rate at which U increases is slow. Okay, U does not uh, increase, you know, very quickly. So it um, sort of when a rate of rise of uh, this current is reduced or decreased, the occurrence of commutation fault is delayed in such a way that before the commutation fault now occurs, okay, the fault is clear because it is a temporary fault. So therefore, what should we say about uh, this LD? Uh, we can say DC reactor uh, performs following um, actions. Number one, 
it reduces i will write here it reduces the incidence incidence of commutation failure incidence of commutation failure in inverter during voltage collapse i mean uh, on the inverter side there may be voltage collapse which will which may increase id and cause commutation failure but since ld this uh, dc reactor reduces the rate of rise of this fault current okay therefore it uh, reduces the incidence of commutation failure how we will study that second function as you already know you have already studied that in uh, one of the early lectures it smoothens the dc line current it smoothens the dc line current that means it reduces the current ripple i will write that is reduces the current ripple okay so it may, makes current almost smooth and constant in nature now the third function is it limits the crest of short circuit current short circuit current in dc line whenever there is short circuit current it reduces its peak it reduces its crest it re reduces the crest of short circuit current okay uh, so these are some of the very important functions uh, uh, performed by dc line reactor let us see how dc line since we are studying the commutation scheme uh, the sorry is protection schemes of hvdc system so this dc reactor also provides a sort of protection so what type of protection it uh, provides it uh, it helps in avoiding the commutation failure because commutation failure is also a sort of maloperation so uh, dc reactor or smoothing reactor helps in reducing the chances of commutation failure let us see uh, how it does okay let us take the commutation voltage of uh, value 3 eba this is 0 this is pi let us assume this is firing angle and therefore uh, this is beta n i mean this angle here to here it is beta n means normal let us assume this is this much is the firing angle or delay angle alpha so what is this remaining angle it is beta so this is normal so at beta n let us suppose the load current or the, sorry the dc line current is idn n stands for normal so normal current is flowing and then there will be u commutation overlap for some time and then this angle will be gamma n okay so that means whatever uh, during this period there will be u this is alpha this is u and what is this this is gamma n so this gamma n i am showing by arrow let us suppose as soon as uh, your value is fired say value 3 is fired here commutation starts between 1 and 3 and simultaneously the, the moment value 3 is fired here firing pulse is issued to value 3 here okay let us suppose uh, inverter uh, side voltage collapses at the instant the value 3 is fired so when com uh, inverter side voltage collapses so current will rise current will increase okay because of increase in current what will happen to um, this u u will increase so uh, under normal circumstances this was u overlap angle now it will increase now the question is how quickly this u will increase it depends upon how quickly your current will increase if current increases very quickly u also increases very quickly and it may go very high and gamma may become less than gamma min and commutation failure will occur now what this dc line reactor or dc reactor does as soon as fault occurs here i mean when value 3 is fired here commutation inverter side voltage has collapsed so current will definitely increase but it limits the rate of rise of current so since current is increasing at a low rate it's slowly increasing so you your u will also increase slowly and finally let us suppose at this point gamma is equal to gamma m where gamma m is the minimum delay angle and we know this minimum delay angle uh, sorry minimum extinction angle we know that this minimum extinction angle is around 15 degrees so it takes current time to rise from normal value to abnormal value so therefore u increases but it, it increases slowly and as soon as this u becomes 
uh, as soon as this gamma becomes gamma m that is let us suppose by the time gamma is equal to gamma m the fault condition is cleared inverter's voltage collapse is over and inverter has regained its normal voltage when inverter side this ac side voltage has come back to its normal value so commutation failure will not be there what would happen if this uh, ld would not have been there the dc reactor would not have been there in absence of dc reactor as soon as you fire value 3 here and let us suppose the moment value 3 is fired inverter side ac voltage collapses so current would have risen very quickly because there was no inductance to limit the rate of rise of current current would have risen very quickly and u would have increased very quickly and before the uh, in, uh, before the inverter side ac voltage would have resumed it have it would have restored the normal value your u or your gamma your u would have been increased so much that gamma would have been less than gamma m and definitely that would result in commutation failure okay but what in presence of this ld what happens as soon as inverter side voltage here with the firing of value 3 um, inverter side voltage collapses current increases but the rate at which current increases is slow so there is increase in u but u increases from this value to this value slowly and as u reaches this value here gamma is equal to gamma m and sufficient time is given to the system uh, to rectify the fault and let us suppose when gamma has become equal to gamma m okay minimum uh, extension angle which is around 15 degrees by that time the normal voltage on ac side of inverter has been restored so therefore this inductor or dc line inductor it uh, reduces the incidence of or chances or probability of commutation failure okay how to calculate this <coughs> How to calculate this inductance? Let us see. Now we will design this inductance for um, uh, commutation failure um, prevention. So I will write here calculation calculation of LD. Let us see how we can calculate this ID. Now at beta n, at beta n you can see what is your uh, DC line current. It is IDN. So ID is equal to id n n stands for normal i mean fault condition has not yet taken place normal current is there in the uh, transmission line so therefore we can say i if you remember this id n is given by is3 times cos gamma n minus cos beta and we have derived this equation in one of the classes one of the early lectures <clears throat> this is the current in fact this is the current carried by value 3 and um, when value 3 is uh, fired, value 3 takes control of load uh, this uh, DC line current. So value current is given by IS3 times cos gamma n minus cos beta n. Where what is this IS3? IS3 is constant value. It is um, it is equal to root 3 em by 2 omega l. We already know what is this. Um, is3 okay <clears throat> now i will write here at gamma equal to gamma m now let us suppose the moment value 3 is fired here inverter side voltage has collapsed and current has started started rising so therefore what is current here at um, uh, here current here is id gamma m let us call this current as id gamma m or id gamma so at gamma equal to gamma m id gamma is equal to id m normal current plus increase in current because as soon as value 3 is fired here inverter side voltage has collapsed so there is rise in the current no doubt this inductor reduces the rate of rise of current but current rises so therefore uh, at this moment what is uh, now new value of current normal value of current was this is3 times cos gamma n minus cos beta so normal value of current was idn so what will be now new value of current when fault has occurred current rises now now new value of current is normal value of current plus increase in the current so from this moment to this moment there is increase in the current from beta n to gamma m there is increase this time is called delta t and during this delta t there is increase in current how much increase in current is there current since fault uh, i mean large current has now increased 
let us assume from beta n the moment when value 3 is fired and inverter side voltage collapses current starts rising so it will increase from id n to id gamma where id gamma is normal current plus increase in the current so increase in current takes place from this to this and what is from beta n to gamma m and let us assume uh, when gamma is equal to gamma m the fault condition is cleared okay so therefore the increase in current from beta n to gamma m takes place during this time this time is uh, uh, denoted by delta t delta e t is the time from beta n to gamma m okay this is the time okay because at beta n normal current was flowing and for, when faulty conditions existed there there was increase in current so from beta n to gamma m there during this time delta t there is increase in the current and how much is the increase in current increase in current is delta id so therefore new value of current is id gamma is equal to id n plus delta id now voltage across ld because of this increase in the voltage since there is increase in the voltage voltage increase over here okay from normal value to some higher value so voltage drop will be there across the inductor what is the voltage drop across inductor let us call that delta vd delta vd is equal to voltage across inductor is l di by dt so this is ld delta id by delta t l di by dt because i will write here vl voltage across inductor is equal to l di by dt so voltage across inductor uh, i mean because of rise in the current there is drop of voltage across inductor and what is the drop in drop of voltage across inductor i represent that by delta vd that is equal to ldi by dt ld into delta id by delta t what is delta id delta id is the increase in the current you know your new current is id and plus delta id so increase in current is current increases by this amount so it is delta id in how much time it increases delta t so therefore delta t is time from beta n to gamma m during this period there is increase in current by how much amount by delta id so therefore voltage across inductor is delta vd is equal to ld delta id by delta t so uh, from this you can find the value of inductance so therefore what is the value of inductance therefore uh, i will write again delta vd voltage across inductor is equal to ld delta id by delta t this will give me the value of inductance so ld is equal to delta vd into delta t by delta id this is the value of inductance this is how we calculate inductance so this is how we calculate the inductance okay now uh, therefore uh, the inductance to prevent the commutation failure is given by this equation delta vd into delta t by delta id delta vd we know we already know okay uh, how do you find this uh, delta t now this delta t i write it is beta n minus gamma m by omega because uh, you can see the time delta t it, it, it's the time during which current increases uh, from idn to idn plus delta id and uh, your value 3 is fired at uh, you know beta n and then u increases and when uh, uh, gamma decreases okay then gamma uh, normal value of gamma was gamma n and then as soon as gamma reaches gamma m which is the minimum uh, extinction angle 15 degrees uh, at this time we assume that fault condition has been cleared and when fault condition is has been cleared commutation failure is prevented so therefore the increase in current and increase in u from beta n to gamma m it has been delayed because the rate of rise of current has been delayed by this inductor and this uh, uh, system has been given sufficient time to clear the uh, to restore the normal voltage okay in absence of ld this uh, current would have risen from this to this and maybe even more than this very quickly and that would have resulted in gamma less than gamma m and commutation failure but what ld does it limits the rate of rise of current so current increases by delta id from beta n to gamma m slowly it gives sufficient time for system to restore its normal voltage and when normal voltage is restored commutation failure does not take place so therefore from beta m beta n to gamma m the time is delta t so therefore that's what i have written here delta t is equal to beta n minus gamma m by omega so where uh, beta n 
and gamma m they are given in radians if they are given in radians okay or i can write delta t is equal to beta n minus gamma m by 360 degrees into f f is the system frequency if beta now in this case beta n and gamma m are in degrees so if beta n and gamma m are in radians then you use this formula for delta t and beta if beta n and gamma m are in degrees then we use this formula so this is how we calculate ld so we know delta vd delta vd is the um, you know uh, voltage across the inductor or it is the collapse of the voltage on the inverter side delta t is the time taken by current to increase from idn to idn plus delta id i mean normal value to abnormal value increased value and increase in the current is delta id this delta id uh, that means increase in current takes place during this time delta t so this delta t is given by this equation so you substitute if you calculate delta t you know what is delta v you know what is delta id increase in the current you substitute here you can find the value of inductance let us try to find the value of inductance we will take an example let <coughs> dc side voltage converter average output voltage be 200 kv normal value of dc line current let us assume is 1.8 kilo ampere let us assume ic is 3 is 10 kilo amperes frequency of the system is 60 hertz gamma n that is um, extinction angle normal extinction angle let us assume it is 10 degrees and gamma m minimum extinction angle let us assume it is 5 degrees okay so your system when system is operating at certain delay angle it gives an average output voltage of 200 kV and at that time normal current is this much and your extinction angle is 10 degrees and you know uh, the moment value 3 is fired let's suppose now fault has occurred inverter side voltage has collapsed now when the inverter side voltage collapses there is a rise in the current so it will not be now 1.8 kilo ampere. It will increase by certain amount. It will be IDN plus delta ID. We will calculate the delta ID. And how much time it will take for current to increase from IDN to IDN plus delta ID? Delta T. And that delta T is given by equation. We have already derived that equation. What is that equation? That is beta N minus gamma M by omega or beta N minus gamma M by 360F. Okay. Now, when current increases, it increases, uh, your gamma decreases from gamma n to gamma m. And it should not go below gamma m because uh, in this example, it is it is assumed that if uh, gamma goes below gamma m, computation failure will occur. So the current, when in increases, current increases, u also increases, but slowly. So therefore, gamma decreases from 10 degrees to 5 degrees, but slowly. And by the time the your gamma decreases to 5 degrees, it's assumed that normal voltage operation has taken place and when normal voltage operation has taken place computation failure chances are over now we have to find ld what is the ex expression for ld let us try to solve this expression for ld is you, have, uh, you know ld is delta vd into delta t by delta id ld is equal to delta vd into delta t by delta id let us call this equation as equation one from this we have to find these values what is delta vd delta vd is the uh, collapse of voltage let us uh, take the extreme case let us what is your voltage dc side voltage is 200 kv let us assume the full voltage collapses okay when there is collapse of the voltage on the inverter side let us assume the inverter side voltage collapses completely so therefore what is vd delta vd delta that is uh, collapse of voltage is 200 kv so th the whole voltage collapses okay now you have to find delta id and delta t now what is delta t you can use the formula now delta t is beta n minus gamma m by 360 degrees into f this is equation 2 beta n is given what is given in uh, equation gamma gamma m is given it is 5 degrees so but we don't know beta n we can however find beta n i will write here we know the normal value of current id n is given by is3 times cos gamma n minus cos beta n now what is normal value of current it is given in the example it is 1.8 kilo ampere so 1.8 is equal what is is3 maximum value of current it is 10 kilo amperes 
10 times cos of what is gamma n? Gamma n is given as 10 degrees cos 10 degrees minus cos beta n. So solve this equation. This will give you beta n. I have solved the equation and I have got beta n as 36.4 degrees. I would uh, like to advise you to uh, check this figure. So beta n as per my calculation is 36.4 degrees. So therefore we can find delta t. Delta t is equal to what is delta t? Beta n minus gamma m by 360 into f. Beta n we have calculated it is 36.4 degrees minus gamma n m is given in the problem. How much is gamma m? It is 5 degrees divided by 360 into frequency. This is a 60 hertz frequency system. So this will give us delta t and as per my calculations delta t is 1.454 into 10 raised power minus 3 second. So it is 1.454 millisecond. That, that means when uh, value 3 is fired, inverter side commutation voltage collapses. It collapses completely and current rises. But inductor limits the rate of rise of current. The current rises from normal value, say IDN to ID gamma. So uh, ID gamma is equal to IDN plus delta ID. And uh, how much time it takes for current to increase from normal value to uh, higher value? 1.454 millisecond okay and this time is sufficient for fault to clear and during this time we assume that fault has already cleared and there is no commutation failure now delta t we have found in the equation we uh, also need delta id now let us find delta id for finding delta id i will again draw this commutation voltage of value 3 eba so here this is beta n and beta n current is id or you can say idn and this is gamma m at gamma m current is again id or so uh, i will write here at beta n what is current current is idn normal current i mean here when uh, this is beta n current is idn normal current fine and um, therefore i can write id beta n is equal to idn this is normal current let me call this equation as equation one at gamma m that is this value gamma m what is current you know when uh, value 3 is fired here somewhere here value 3 is fired inverter side voltage collapses and current starts rising if current here was idn what will be current here it will be idn plus delta id okay as u increases your your gamma decreases so this is increasing u and during this period this is delta t or from delta t which is 1.454 millisecond current increases from normal value idn to idn plus delta id so therefore at gamma m your current is id gamma m and what is that id gamma m id gamma m is idn plus delta id let us call this uh, equation one two this is equation three and this is equation four let us add equations three and four adding equations three and four what we get we will get id beta n plus id gamma m is equal to id n plus id n is two id n plus delta id okay let us call this equation as equation five okay now i will write one very important point here I will, because i have to find this L delta id okay i will write that uh, before collapse of voltage before collapse of inverter side voltage inverter ac voltage or before collapse of inverter voltage your id i can write id n id beta n plus id gamma m by 2 is equal to id n which is equal to is 3 times cos gamma m minus cos beta n i mean uh, see when uh, under normal circumstances when uh, there is no uh, collapse of inverter side voltage normal conditions are there what is current here current here is id n and what is current here it is id gamma here current is id beta n here current is id gamma m let us call current here as id beta n and what is current here it is id gamma m 
Isn't it? Uh, isn't ID beta n same as ID gamma m? Yes, because there is no rise in the current. Whatever current is here, same current is here because uh, you know abnormal operation inverter side voltage has not collapsed. There will be rise in the current only when inverter side voltage collapses. But I have written here under normal operation that is before the collapse of inverter side voltage. ID beta n is same as ID gamma m. So if I write ID beta n plus ID gamma m. So ID beta n is same as ID n. ID gamma m is also same as ID n. So what is ID beta n plus ID gamma m? It is ID n plus ID n. ID n plus ID n is 2 ID n. Divided that by 2. So that will give, give you ID n. So therefore ID beta n plus ID gamma m by 2 is equal to ID n which is IS 3 times cos of beta uh, gamma m minus beta n. Let us call this equation as equation 6. So from equation 5 from equation 5 this is our equation 5 id beta n plus id gamma m is equal to 2 id n um, plus delta id so i will reproduce this equation i will write id beta n plus id gamma m is equal to 2 id n plus delta id so let us divide both sides by 2 dividing both sides by 2 what do you get you get id beta n plus id gamma m by 2 is equal to, if you divide this side by 2 so you will get id n because 2 and 2 cancels plus delta id by 2 so this will from here you can get delta id so therefore what is by the way what is id beta n plus id gamma m by 2 uh, from equation 6 id beta n plus id gamma m by 2 is equal to id n and that is is 3 times cos of gamma m minus cos of beta n so therefore i can write here is 3 times cos of gamma m minus cos of beta n is equal to id n plus delta id by 2. Why I have written there this equal to this because id beta n plus id gamma m by 2 from equation 5 id beta n plus id gamma m by 2 is id n and what is id n that is is 3 times cos gamma m minus cos beta n that is what I have written. So from this I can find delta id. So this will give me delta id equation for delta id if you find equation for delta id from this equation so delta id is equal to <clears throat> 2 is 3 times cos of gamma m minus cos of beta n minus 2 id n where from you got it you got it from this equation you got it from this equation from here delta id is equal to 2 times is3 cos beta n gamma n minus cos beta minus 2 id n so that's what i have written okay now you have all the figures with you 2 into is3 what is is3 given in the uh, example in the problem itself is3 is given and is3 is given as 10 kilo amperes so 2 into 10 cos of gamma m cos gamma m is 5 degrees minus cos of beta n beta n we have already found from previous equation that is 36.4 degrees minus 2 into id and normal current is 1.8 kilo amperes so this will give you rise in the current from beta n to gamma m rise in the current in delta t time so what is rise in the current if you sub uh, calculate this you, rise in the current will be 0.2277 kilo ampere so this is the increase in the current so therefore from equation uh, what have we named that equation one yes therefore from equation one you can now calculate the value of ld ld is equal to delta vd into delta t by delta id what is delta vd delta vd is the collapse in voltage and uh, voltage is 200 kilo volts the all we assume that whole voltage collapses so delta vd is 200 into 10 to the power 3 volts 200 kilo volts multiplied by how much time it takes for current to rise from you know um, normal value to some high value uh, that is delta t and delta t we have already calculated delta t if you remember it is 1. 454 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 seconds okay divided by delta id delta id we have just now found it is 0 0.2277 into 10 raised to the power 3 so if you substitute these values and as per my calculation the dc line inductor dc inductor or smoothing inductor comes out to be around 1.3125 henry it's a very big value very large value and you know this is the dc 
side inductor and this dc side inductor we have designed from the point of view of prevention of commutation failure when this value of dc inductor is put in your hvdc system whose parameters you have already uh, written in your problem in your example it will prevent the incidence of commutation failure because let us assume value 3 is fired at alpha okay as soon as value 3 fires and worst condition we have taken that whole inverter side voltage collapses so their current will rise but the rate at which current rises is slow the, how much time it takes for current to rise delta t and that is 1.454 into 10 is 1 minus 3 second and current rises from normal value which is um, what is the normal value of current 1.8 kilo amperes to 1.8 plus 0.2 to 77 kilo ampere and in how much time delta t so current slowly rises and when current reaches this value your gamma is equal to gamma m and if current increases beyond this value gamma will become less than gamma m and commutation failure will occur but it takes time for your gamma to reduce from gamma n to gamma m how much time it takes 1.454 into 10 to the power minus 3 second which is considered a sufficiently large time and it is assumed that during this time your fault uh, that is voltage inverter vol has resumed it has restored its normal voltage and therefore the inductor ld whose value is around 1.3125 henry it increases the it causes the decrease in the uh, uh, rise of the uh, current uh, rate of rise of current is decreased and it prevents the incidence of commutation failure and uh, simultaneously what what is the other function performed by this inductor this inductor also uh, smoothens the DC line or transmission line current it reduces or it removes all the ripples and makes it ripple free current so this is the role of LD uh, other than uh, making the DC line current ripple free it also you have seen with, with this theoretical concept and with the help of this example you have seen that this inductor uh, reduces the rate of rise of current whenever a faulty condition occurs and it prevents the occurrence of commutation failure it helps in the prevention prevention of commutation failure okay that was about dc line race. now after now after this we are going to study uh, the role of damper circuits that's fourth type of protection scheme damper circuits what is the role of damper circuits in your hvdc systems there are different types of damper circuits used in your HVDC system. So various types of damper circuits are number one, value dampers, number two, anode dampers, and number three, line dampers. Let us discuss them one by one. What is the role of these damper circuits? So first of all, we will discuss voltage oscillations and value dampers. Actually, what happens? Why are there voltage oscillations in an HVDC converter system? See, um, there are always stray inductances and capacitances in your system, in your HVDC system. And when a value is fired, it discharges through these stray capacitances and inductances. And when your um, value discharges through stray inductances and capacitances after it is fired, it results in oscillations, which are, which are called voltage oscillations. Okay, so due to stray inductance and stray capacitance when a value is fired what happens it discharges through these stray capacitance and stray inductance and results in low results in low magnitude high frequency voltage oscillations voltage oscillations the frequency of these oscillations is 10 to 20 kilohertz okay 
Now these oscillations have to be because these oscillations will have positive values as well as negative values. What will your damper circuit do? Uh, damper circuit will uh, see if these oscillations are there their uh, amplitude negative amplitude may be very large and the uh, when these voltage oscillations are there their positive peak and negative peak may go to very large values and when negative peak goes to large value it may exceed the peak inverse voltage of your valve and may, your valve may get damaged so what will your damper circuit do damper circuit limits the rate of rise of inverse voltage that means this negative voltage the rate at which this negative voltage rises it limits its rate and it reduces peak inverse voltage it not only reduces the rate of rise of inverse voltage but it reduces the magnitude of negative or inverse voltage also and hence it reduces the peak inverse voltage otherwise if da this uh, damper circuit is not provided with your value you are because of these voltage oscillations your negative voltage peak may go beyond what is the peak inverse voltage of your value it is root 3 em so peak inverse voltage may exceed this uh, root 3 em and hence your valves will get damaged very quickly they will get but this in presence of these damper circuits these voltage oscillations will not be allowed to uh, uh, impress a, a reverse bias or reverse voltage across the valves which is greater than it greater than their peak inverse voltage so therefore it reduces the peak inverse voltage okay so third is it avoids the damper circuit avoids the breaking down on inverse voltage breaking down as inverse voltage exceeds rated voltage see uh, you are if inverse voltage exceeds the rated voltage your value and your circuit may break down since since it limits the peak inverse voltage so breakdown is uh, not allowed okay so therefore you know um, damper circuits are very very important so therefore if uh, this is your value what, what type of damper circuit we put? We put a capacitor across it. Now, if you put only capacitor, okay, so um, satisfactory rate of rise of voltage can be obtained by connecting a capacitor across each value. So, when you connect capacitor like across value, it acts as a damper and it um, reduces the frequency of these voltage oscillations to 1 to 2 kilohertz only. Otherwise, in absence of this capacitor, what is the frequency of uh, these voltage oscillations when the value is for 10 to 20 kilohertz okay it reduces the frequency of voltage oscillations from 10 to 20 kilohertz to 1 to 2 kilohertz only okay but overshoot is 100 percent it does not reduce overshoot overshoot is 100 percent so that that means capacitor alone will not work so what you have to do along with capacitor you have to use resistor also so therefore your damper circuit will be something like this this is say one value and this is another value that valves are in um, parallel in sorry series so dampers are connected like this this is one damper this is another. this damper rc so instead of c damper only what we do we use rc damper rc damper across this value and this is the rc damper of this valve so what will this rc damper do with rc dampers The frequency of oscillation is reduced to 1 to 2 kilohertz. It is done if only capacitor damper is connected. So what is the additional advantage? And peak voltage and overshoot is also lowered. I mean your overshoot is not 100%. It is much much less than 100%. So therefore when it reduces the overshoot so therefore breakdown of the device is prevented so this is uh, about uh, you know value damper so each value is provided with its value damper and what does value damper comprise of it comprises of rc circuit and if you remember i don't know whether uh, you have uh, and I, whether you have been taught this or not uh, thyristors are fitted with their snubber circuits so this rc 
circuit acts as a snubber circuit also. Snubber circuit prevents the rate of the triggering of the device against high DV by DT signals. Okay, so in addition to that, it also prevents the voltage oscillations. Okay, you have seen. So these are uh, valve dampers. So valve, uh, in the nutshell, in, uh, when we summarize, what, do, what can we say? We can say that these RC dampers uh, reduce the magnitude and frequency of voltage oscillations across the valves and hence prevent the breakdown of the valves. Now next is current oscillations and anode dampers. Current oscillations and anode dampers. This is another type of damper circuit. It's called anode damper. What's its function? Now again, you know, in the circuit, I, I would like to again repeat that in your circuit, so for example, if this is your value, this value is associated with a small, um, you know, across this value, a small stray inductance and a stray capacitance is always there. LS and CS. S stands for stray. Stray inductance and stray capacitance. And you know, when you uh, delay the firing of this value, the voltage across the value increases. For example, instead of firing it here, if you fire it somewhere here, so voltage from zero crossing to this goes on increasing. And as you delay the firing of value, the more and more voltage will appear across it. And the moment you fire it, it discharges through this stray inductance and stray capacitance, which is across it. Okay, and uh, since the value discharges through uh, stray capacitances and stray inductances which are connected across it, it results in, uh, you know, that uh, we can say that the discharge is oscillatory. Okay, so I will write here if firing of value is delayed, so if you delay the firing of value, a positive voltage. A positive voltage across a positive voltage is built up across it and when you fire it when value is fired this positive voltage collapses this positive voltage collapses and then we can say any stray capacitances stray capacitances and inductances across the valve cause charging and discharging which is oscillatory in nature which is oscillatory in nature i hope you have understood when you delay the firing of a value the voltage across value is already positive and when value is fired the voltage across it collapses and since there are always stray inductances and capacitances across the value the value discharges there is charging and discharging of this capacitor you know stray capacitor and uh, this charging and discharging is uh, the, it's oscillatory in nature and frequency of oscillations is very high it is 20 kilohertz to 10 megahertz this is the frequency of oscillations now due to this uh, charging and discharging across the value the value um, you know the voltage through the value may be zero so due to charging and discharging It's very important you have to understand this point the voltage across value may be zero when it is fired next i mean when you have fired it first time it resulted in oscillatory you know charging and discharging and the frequency of oscillation is 20 kilohertz to 10 megahertz and then this uh, continues the oscillations voltage oscillations across the value continue 
uh, and of course current oscillations also and uh, it may have so happen then the next time when you issue the firing pulse to this value the voltage across value is zero why because when the when current is flowing through the value the charging and discharging current is flowing through the value we already know that when value uh, you know conducts some current the voltage across it is zero so next time when uh, it is fired again by your control logic circuit it may not get triggered because at that time because of the charging current or discharge current through the value the voltage across it may have fallen to zero so therefore this results in a condition which is similar to misfire okay although uh, there is no uh, you know uh, misfire there is not actual misfire misfire means your value is faulty it is forward biased and you are issuing firing pulse to it but it is not firing that's called misfire here the value is not faulty but because of the charging and discharging um, uh, in presence of these stray capacitances and inductances across the value the moment the firing pulse is issued across it it is possible that at that time voltage across the value may be still zero okay because of the flow of this charging and discharging current and value will not fire so a situation similar to misfire will occur so therefore drawbacks of current the drawbacks of current oscillations so these current oscillations will have some serious drawbacks or repercussions number one they will result in radio interference because the frequency of oscillation is 20 kilohertz to 10 megahertz so it is definitely going to create radio interference and second misfire the moment value is fired it's possible that value has already uh, the voltage across value at that time because of charging and discharging current oscillations because of current oscillations the voltage across the value is zero so it will not fire so a situation similar to misfire will be created so these are drawbacks of these are these are the causes of current oscillations and their drawbacks how to you know take care of these current oscillations for that purpose you have to use anode dampers so what are anode dampers let me discuss with you let me show you uh, an old damper so this is our value which is to be fired and the, this is strain capacitance across it cs and this is say for example stray inductance across it ls so what do you do you connect an inductance external inductance in series with this which is ld which is a part of damper circuit and across this inductance you connect a resistance rd also so this is your damper anode damper circuit anode damper so how does it help in uh, you know uh, taking care of these oscillations so for example in absence of uh, your anode damper this may be uh, the oscillation oscillating current through your value okay so as soon as you connect the damper say for example you connect this inductor in series with the uh, value which acts as an anode damper so it reduces the frequency of oscillation say the frequency of oscillation is reduced but magnitude is not reduced it is continuously there its frequency is reduced but magnitude is not reduced so then if you connect resistor also across this inductor so this becomes your rd or uh, sorry rl anode damper so in that case this is what will happen so let me zoom this if you zoom this it will become something like this so this is uh, in presence of ld only and this is in presence of ld rd when complete damper circuit is you can see uh, this uh, if uh, damper anode damper comprises of ld only that then it reduces the frequency of oscillation but not amplitude if ld as well as rd like this ld rd is connected across ld this becomes your anode damper then in that case frequency as well as amplitude is also reduced and after a few cycles the these oscillations are they damp out they die out so therefore there are no oscillations after two or three cycles and your value is prevented and when there are no current oscillations because of this anode damper so there will be nothing like radio interference and misfire so this is how anode damper takes care of you know current oscillations so this was about anode dampers this third type of dampers are dc line dampers we have dc line oscillations there may be oscillations in dc line also and for suppressing those oscillations we use line dampers 
DC line oscillations and line dampers. Now the question is, what are uh, what are the causes of oscillations in the DC line? So I will write here DC line oscillations may be caused by impressing alternating or step voltages or by a short circuit this is due to stray inductances and capacitances stray L and C between poles you know you have your uh, DC line comprises of there are two poles positive pole and negative pole and between those two poles there may be strain inductances and capacitances uh, whenever you fire a, you start a converter you energize a line you know there may be step rise in the voltage uh, across the line between the two lines there may be step increase in the voltage or if there is a short circuit then this step increase in the voltage or this short circuit uh, will result in line oscillations because of the stray inductance and capacitance connected between the uh, two poles. Okay. The question is, what are what, what are the step? What is the step change in voltage due to? Step change in voltage is because of following reasons. Number one, by starting up the rectifier. By starting up the rectifier. For example, your rectifier. Uh, in the rectifier station was off as soon as you start it up the, the rectifier output voltage suddenly increases so that causes step change in the voltage and step change in the voltage in presence of stray inductance and capacitance between the two poles results in line oscillations second cause may be re-energizing re-energizing of line from short circuit. Suppose short circuit has occurred, line is disconnected and once short circuit condition is over, you have to re-energize the line and as soon as you re-energize the transmission line, DC transmission line, there may be step increase in the voltage, step change in the voltage and that will also result in line oscillations. Third may be because of a recovery from AC fault. Maybe there was some fault on AC side of rectifier or inverter. And as soon as that uh, fault is recovered, there is recovery from the fault, there is step change in the voltage. And that may cause line oscillations. And fourth is, I will write here, fourth cause is um, bypassing or unbypassing. Unbypassing the bridge. You may have to sometimes bypass the bridge. Suppose the bridge has developed some fault. You have to take bridge out for repairs or maintenance. So you have to bypass it. When you bypass it, there may be step change in the voltage. Similarly, when you have to put uh, bridge after repairs or after maintenance back into service, you have to unbypass it. And that will also result in step change in the voltage on the DC line. And these are the causes of step change in the voltage by starting up the rectifier, re-energizing of line from short circuit, recovery from AC fault, or bypassing or unbypassing the bridge. So these are the causes of step change in the line voltage. And line voltage, when it undergoes step change in presence of stray inductance and capacitance between the poles, it gives rise to line oscillations. Now these line oscillations have to be damped out. How to damp them out? So you can damp out these uh, line oscillations by, so I will write here, damping can be achieved or obtained by using resistors, <clears throat> sorry, by using resistors across the smoothing reactor LD and or stray capacitance stray capacitance so it is something like this see what you have to do this is your hvdc power transmission system so this is your converter or inverter and this is your line dc line smoothing reactor and you know between the poles this is positive pole and say this is negative pole there is a stray capacitance cs stray capacitance so this what you do you connect a resistor 
RD across this LD and you connect RD1 and you connect an another resistor uh, we call this RD2 across stray capacitor. You have to assume that there is already a stray capacitance between the poles. So you have to connect a heavy, uh, you know, high value of resistance across this stray capacitance and you have to connect another resistor across the, you know, this uh, smoothing reactor or DC reactor. So this will help in damping the oscillations. But this method of damping the line oscillations is lossy. Because, you know, resistor, when you connect resistor across the inductor, so some current will flow always through the resistor and that will result in I square R losses. So to uh, reduce the losses, what you do uh, in series with resistor RD, you put a capacitor also, CD. So by putting a capacitor in series with resistor, the losses are reduced. So now this arrangement, this is also a damper circuit. You have to put this damper circuit across inductor. Okay, so this will give reduced losses this is called rc damper rc line damper but the size of damper is still higher so to reduce the size of damper you have to add inductor also so you, the arrangement is like this c cd then rd and then put an inductor also ld so when all the three elements are used there so this becomes smaller size and low cost line damper so therefore your line damper will be like this you have this is your you know sorry this is your smoothing reactor across this smoothing reactor you put line damper like this line damper comprises of rd ld and cd so this is a low cost small size and low loss line damper i will write low loss low cost and small size line damper if you put only you know resistor a resistor will be smallest of all but it will be lossy in nature if you put capacitor in series with the resistor it will reduce the losses but it will be heavy now if you want low losses and low size and low cost then you put capacitor also you know inductor also in series so your line damper in that case will be rd ld and cd so this is about line dampers this is how various damper circuits are used uh, to prevent your hvdc system from oscillations so summarizing let us see what we have studied over last two lectures last two classes in our previous class we have studied about you know um, uh, protection schemes of your HVDC system and your HVDC system has AC system and DC system both the AC side as well as DC side have to be protected against over voltages and over currents we have studied over voltages causes of over voltages on the AC side causes of over voltages in HVDC converter station causes of over currents on AC side, side causes of AC currents in HVDC converter station and uh, we have also studied various protection schemes, over voltage scheme, over current scheme for HVDC converter station. And I have in previous lecture given you a schematic diagram of a comprehensive over voltage scheme of complete HVDC converter station or converter system. And over current scheme has also been uh, discussed in last lecture. Apart from over voltage and over current protection schemes, you have to provide other type of protection schemes like you have to provide protection against current oscillations, voltage oscillations and line oscillations. Now what are voltage oscillations due to? Voltage oscillations are due to, you know, uh, stray inductances and capacitances. Whenever a valve is fired, it charges and discharges through these stray inductances and capacitances and this results in voltage oscillations. And these voltage oscillations have detrimental effect on your valves. They may impress very high positive and negative voltage across the valves and your valves may get damaged. So to uh, you know, suppress these uh, you know, voltage oscillations, which are there because of stray inductance and capacitances, you use valve dampers. A valve damper is simply a, an RC snubber circuit. You put an RC snubber circuit across each valve and that effectively damps these voltage oscillations and protects your valves uh, from getting damaged due to uh, you know, high uh, reverse voltages or inverse voltages. It does not allow inverse voltage to become higher than peak inverse voltage of the valve. And then we have also seen that there are current oscillations. The current oscillations are again, if you delay the firing of a valve, 
the voltage across value builds up and the moment you fire the value the voltage across it collapses and volt when voltage across it collapses the value charges and discharges through stray inductances and capacitances and this gives rise to current oscillations in the circuit and the current oscillations are again detrimental they result in misfire because you know the moment next firing instant is issued to this particular value it is possible that at that time current oscillations are there and current oscillations make the voltage across the device across the value zero and value will not fire so a situation similar to misfire will uh, you know exist it will occur there and second problem of these current oscillations is that since their frequency is 20 kilohertz to 10 megahertz very high frequency they result in radio interference so therefore you have to you know suppress or damp these current oscillations for that purpose you have to use anode dampers and anode damper comprises of an inductor and uh, a resistor in series and that effectively damps the current oscillations and hence radio interference is you know avoided and also misfire phenomenon is also prevented and third type of oscillation is line oscillation the between the poles of a trans dc transmission line there may be again stray capacitances and these stray capacitances whenever there are step change in voltage across the line because of bypassing or unbypassing of bridge or because of starting up the rectifier or because of recovery from ac fault or because of re-energization of the line from short circuit uh, you know whenever there is a step change in the voltage across the line in presence of the stray capacitance there may be line oscillations and these line oscillations are very effectively damped by line dampers so these are the examples of line dampers uh, low cost low loss and small size line damper is or LC damper across the you know DC line reactants DC reactants or smoothing reactants we have also so uh, we have also studied the role of DC reactor or smoothing reactor the smoothing reactor or DC reactor apart from smoothing the DC current reducing its ripple content making it ripple free and constant current also helps in prevention of commutation failure so therefore our complete HVDC transmission system has to be protected against over voltages, over currents and uh, line, uh, the current oscillations, voltage oscillations, line oscillations and commutation failure. So we have studied over last two lectures how over voltage protection can be provided, how over current protection can be provided, what is the role of uh, an, uh, line, uh, these uh, value dampers, value dampers suppress or damp the voltage oscillations what is the role of anode dampers they suppress the current oscillations and the role of line dampers is that they damp the line oscillations and the role of dc reactor or smoothing reactor is that it not only uh, reduces the ripple content in line current but it also helps in the prevention of commutation failure so this is about um, you know uh, various protection schemes of your hvdc converter system so over last four to five lectures, we have been discussing mal operations. In the, the I mean, uh, we have been discussing module three, and this mod in this module three, we have discussed mal operations like arc through um, misfire and commutation failure, uh, which uh, are very common, very frequent in HVDC converter systems, and we have also studied protection schemes. And with this, we end module number three. Inshallah, in our next lecture, we will start with module number four. I will take a break of few days because I have to get connected to BTEC students from tomorrow and I have to deliver some lectures to BTEC students. After a break of few days, we will start our next module, module number four, that is HVDC system control schemes. So I advise you all to please go through this lecture and um, in case of any doubts, uh, please feel free to uh, ask me. I will try to clear your doubts. Thank you.